This is Fergus Hay, and welcome to Creativity, Weapon of Mass Disruption, where we profile pioneers who have unleashed the power of creativity to disrupt our assumptions, our categories, our industries, and drive agendas to great effect. Today, I'm joined by serial entrepreneur and challenger to the establishment, Tony Fernandez. Few really know what box to place Tony in. He's an airline entrepreneur, having founded the phenomenally successful AirAsia, bringing low-cost regional travel to Asians who have never flown before. He's also a hotelier, with the Tune Group making destinations accessible for Asians with affordable accommodation. So, Tony, if we were to peek back into time and look through the curtains of the Fernandez household, what would we have seen? Would you have seen a really creative environment where you're encouraged to kind of break perceptions and think differently? My mother was highly creative. She was a piano teacher. Uh, music was in our house. My father had like a, a billion records in all those <laughs> Reader's Digest box sets and five track cartridges. So a lot of music from that side. Your mother sounds an sounded like an incredible woman. Yeah. Strong, um, very independent. Uh, she you know, set up the Tupperware business in Asia. She used to wake you up in the middle of the night to co-write songs. Yeah. And I hear that she hosted Ray yeah, Charles in yeah. your home. This is yeah. an amazingly unique environment. Well, it, it is, really. I mean, you know, I'd have the ink spots, platters, Ray Charles, you know, all coming to me. She'd just call up. These were the days before terrorism and security. You know, she'd just call up the hotel and say, I'm having a party. Would you like to come over? Wow. And they would. There was something yeah, about would. her that people yeah. would. Her strength. Well, she was an amazing people motivator, and she was an amazing believer in her own ability that she could do anything. A young mother who had the temerity to call up major international stars and invite yeah. them around to her house yeah. shows a kind of a wonderful abandon of parameters and cons constructs. It felt like she kind of felt anything was possible. Yes, very much, and that's the kind of uh, belief that I had when mm. I saw these sort of things. That, yeah. I was like, wow, you know, anything is possible. And, that stuck with me all my life. Tony, you are a kind of ball of fire of energy and making things happen. But I did find one quote that felt like it was a real moment of introspection, which was talking about your mother's death. Yeah. And you mentioned that something, when she died, something inside of you died. When she died, there was a massive hole because she was larger than life, right? Yeah. What really died a little bit in me was playing music because I used to enjoy it so much. You know, I, I don't do it very often now. There's a wonderful story about you and a friend um, watching aircraft take off when you were at some College. Yeah. Um, and you turned around to him and said, I'm going to own one of those one day. Yeah. Surely he laughed at you and yeah. said, don't be ridiculous. Well, all my life, that, that's been the case, right? I, from six years old, I think at Subang Airport, I told my, my dad I was going to own an airline. The next time I said it was 12, I think. I read the, a fairly scathing attack from you, which um, was, was very kind of clear in my head of the current education systems being very metrics based, very um, evaluative, very quantitative, yeah. Yeah. not giving people the room to grow creatively. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, when I do skate something, I try and do something about it. So I'm building a school at the moment, I'm building an Epsom College in Malaysia right now. But education, like my airline, is about bringing the best out of people. Mm. Not, not, a, not everyone is academic. Right. And school should be the place where you discover what you're good at. And I also feel that the teaching process is memorizing books, which, which kills what you're talking about, creativity. Where does creativity come from? Creativity comes from not from memorizing a bloody book. It comes from art, drama, music. And creative learning is understanding the history. What was the thought process of Stalin when mm. he went through this? Mm. What was... Um, the thought process of Winston Churchill or Alexander the Great. And as opposed to memorizing the book, right. you know, for me, exams are very easy if you just understand what's behind it. That's what I've done my best out of AirAsia. I meet every new staff and I give them the same kind of spiel, which is you only have one life. You might as well make the most of that life. Yeah. And don't let anyone tell you you can't achieve anything. My job is to bring things out of you that you don't even know is there to turn you from a raw diamond into a diamond, and to push your personality to try things that you never did. And I, I, I reward failure because I say, at least you tried. Right. You don't want to sit there at 55 and say, oh, I wish I did it. Um, so we push people into that. To be able to do that, you have to have a creative en en environment that allows people to think, that allows people to speak up without fear, and allows people to try and fail. 
So environment is the most critical element in, in innovation. I, I spend a lot of time walking around, uh, walking around management. That's yeah. my style. Yeah. I saw a lot of talented kids, and this one boy was super smart. And I said, why don't you be a pilot? Go for the kid. He said, I've got no qualifications. I left school when I was 12. So <laughs> I don't care. This is my airline. And uh, <laughs> he got in to be a pilot. That's great. And um, he's now a captain. So that changes the whole motivation of the organization, right? Anything is possible. Your spirit of being the underdog started kind of young, I guess, when you arrived at Epson yeah. as, a, as the yeah. foreigner, guy who can't use a knife and a fork. Yeah. But um, I think that when you went into the music business, it was the first time I've seen you take on the establishment. And you decided that you, know, you needed to create a series on the AI, AIM Awards. You've recognized the importance of recognition yes. by people. Yeah. What, does that put people on a pedestal? Does that give people something to aim for? Is fame important to us to kind of perform? I think recognition is very important. Yeah. I think humans crave recognition, whether it's going out with a beautiful woman, so you walk into the club and everyone says, wow, who's that guy <laughs> with a hot girl wearing a great suit, doing a piece of work? You want to be recognized. That is, yeah. That's why a communist society doesn't work because human needs ambition, human needs recognition. Yeah. Is it part of creativity? Is it, is it that oh, people 100%. can aim to you? Yeah. No, pe you don't give recognition. People aren't going to want to try. Right. They just go nine to five as an average job, go back. Yeah. But you've got to create that, I want to be 110%. I want to be a winner. You know, when you're trying to break establishment, and it's very good the way your program is because you're not talking about creativity just in paintings or you think about it in an abstract way in management, in terms of uh, breaking down barriers. That's right. It's creativity that breaks down barriers. It's, and creativity in how you deal with government, mm. and creativity with ha and how you pick a route. Mm. Uh, every airline went to the same two places. I went to places no airline went to. Yeah. And uh, a lot of our route structure is innovative and, and creative. What was your most soul-searching time with AirAsia? When was that moment when you sat at home with the lights off thinking, my god? Do you know, I never thought that. It's bizarre. Maybe I never had time to think about it. Right. What scared me the most was the 254 staff had a job before mm. with a safe company, mm. DRB High Company, they got a salary every month. It terrified me if I failed, they'd be out of the job. Mm. I didn't know how to face them. I want to close um, with just a final question, which is, in your experience, what do you think is kind of the magic ingredient to unlocking creativity? Environment. That's it. You know creating an environment where people do not fear failure, where success is embraced and praised, and where creativity is implemented. Too much of great creativity is just talked about and never done. Every creative idea in AirAsia is implemented. Every creative idea is celebrated, from the guy who designed our uniforms to the pilot who saved us 3% fuel by coming up with a new landing technique. So there's a DNA in everyone to be creative, and we need to create there's the environment and the correct. bravery to do It's it. environment. There's nothing else. You can't teach it. You can't teach creativity. You, nurture it, maybe. You can nurture it. You have to create the environment for people to, to go out there and dream and uh, be creative. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've heard from Tony how the importance of challenging convention, thinking freely and bravely, can enable the underdog to climb on top. And that's the disruptive power of creativity, taking something you believe in, thinking without constraint, and committing to it. That's how creativity can be a weapon of mass disruption. Join me, Fergus Hay, for the next edition of Creativity, Weapon of Mass Disruption, when I meet Emmanuel Jal, Sudanese ex-child soldier turned Africa's biggest rap artist, who is using his music to raise the agenda of child soldiers in Africa. For more information, visit OglevyDoo.com, find us on Facebook forward slash OglevyDoo, and follow us at OglevyDoo 